This podcast is part of the Bomb Pod Media Network. Happy Wednesday, weirdos! From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. Some new events are currently being considered for upcoming Olympic Games. They include poker, foosball, video gaming, and pole dancing. Man, is it any wonder the Olympics get fewer and fewer viewers every four years? I mean, really, what's next? Monopoly? Hungry Hungry Hippo? Well, Halloween is gone and the holidays are right around the corner. And that said, the average American is expected to cough up around $700 this holiday season. Unless you manage to break up with him or her right after Thanksgiving, and that'll cut down on your costs. A Japanese company created a $150 noise-canceling ramen fork to cover up slurping noises. Who makes slurping noises with a fork? President Trump raised a few eyebrows when he distributed Halloween candy to children of the White House press corps. He expressed shock that the media produced such beautiful children. He even commented on the children's weight while handing Hershey's kisses to the young trick-or-treaters, telling them that it was okay to take the candy because they didn't appear to have weight problems. <laughs> wow! Man, you know you've got talent when you can create division and controversy simply by passing out candy to kids. UPS estimates it'll deliver 750 million packages between Thanksgiving and Christmas this year. Porch thieves are already aware of this. Oakland A's catcher Bruce Maxwell allegedly aimed a gun at a female driver Saturday evening and was arrested for aggravated assault. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night stays these couriers from oh heck no! SeaWorld has announced that they're laying off 350 workers in San Diego and Orlando, which is incredibly sad for those having to seek employment elsewhere. I mean, what else are dolphins and killer whales qualified to do? In Pennsylvania, 21-year-old Michael Rosado Jr. was sentenced to seven and a half to 15 years after pleading guilty in August to robbery and three counts of burglary. All of this for stealing one dollar and a household plant that he apparently thought was marijuana during a series of break-ins. Police say Rosado broke into Jabberjaw's Bar & Grill in Allentown. The manager confronted Rosado but backed off when Rosado pointed a gun at him. Rosado then made off with a keepsake dollar. You know, one of those dollars that's in a picture frame right above the cash register. Well, from there, police say Rosado broke into a house and left with a plant. A single plant. Officers say he then threatened a woman with his gun before taking her purse. He was arrested shortly thereafter. Well, now that Halloween is past, Americans are actually coming up on a fairly significant anniversary. November 8th will be one year since America elected Donald Trump the President of the United States. And it appears many Americans from coast to coast plan to commemorate the one-year anniversary by screaming their heads off. Thousands of Facebook users have signed up to attend events in Boston, New York, Miami, Philadelphia, Dallas, Austin, and in Bellingham, Washington. The idea is that collectively the protesters will all scream at the same time, and so far 33,000 have signed up. Joanna Schulman, who helped organize the Boston event, said, "...coming together reminds us that we are not alone, that we are part of an enormous community of activists who are motivated and angry." whose actions can make a difference. Uh, you're all screaming at the top of your lungs. I mean, what, what kind of a difference do you expect that to bring, huh? I mean, other than making every single one of you look ridiculously stupid. But then again, I'm guessing uh, you were that way before, because there's no other explanation for coming up with this idea. Fifty different Walmart stores will soon have robots roaming the aisles of the stores, mostly dedicated to asking people not to squeeze the Charmin. Okay, yeah, I know I'm reaching way back for that one. I, I know. Simon Cowell's fall down the stairs last week was due to his ongoing struggle with low blood pressure. Although I was going to guess his brain just couldn't take any more mediocre talent auditions and shut down on him. It's hard to separate your kids from their cell phones, but recent research published in the journal Sleep reveals that tweens and teens are doing a lot more texting and talking than their parents realize. In fact, 62% of the kids surveyed admitted to using cell phones even after they've gone to bed for the night. You know, kids are not the only ones. 
I have to go to bed an hour and a half early, I mean, just so I have enough time to catch up on YouTube and Facebook. It's ironic tragedy on a grand scale in Arlington, Virginia. A 12-year-old boy jumped from a highway overpass and police believe it was a suicide attempt. He landed on the moving vehicle of 22-year-old Marissa Harris, killing her. Ironically, Harris actually worked with children with severe behavioral problems. Her boyfriend was in the passenger seat of the SUV at the time and was able to grab the steering wheel and safely guide the car off the interstate. The 12-year-old boy was hospitalized with life-threatening injuries. Harris was pursuing a master's degree in clinical counseling at Marymount University, and her mother says she had a passion for helping troubled children and given the chance, she could have helped the boy who jumped. Her father says she was loved by her friends, she was dearly loved by her family, and she was admired by her peers. She was just a shining star. Even more ironic, if the boy does live, he will then be charged with Harris's murder. A new survey says the teachers are more stressed than they were two years ago thanks to school budget cuts, bullying, coarse political discourse, and the shaky status of immigrant students. That and students have traded in rebelling with chewing gum for rebelling with bullets. Starting next year, Saudi Arabia will begin allowing women into sports stadiums. Oh, well, now it makes sense. They had to allow them to drive earlier last week so that they can make money off them when they go into the sports stadiums next year. Ah, oh, okay, now it makes all now. It, all right, I get it now. In Texas, two guys were hanging out at a third guy's house. One of the two went to the fridge and helped himself to some pickles. According to a police report, the homeowner said he couldn't afford to feed everyone and not to eat his pickles. Well, the pickle-eating friend began yelling and swearing and stormed out. Later, he came back, went into the fridge, pulled out the jar of pickles again and threw it at his homeowner friend. Police were called and the pickle-eating friend was escorted out of the home. Now instead of pickles, he's in a jam. Ada Keating is 98 years old and believes one thing most adamantly – you never stop being a mom. She has moved into a British retirement home so that she can help care for an 80-year-old man who happens to be her son, whom she feels needs more care and support than he was getting. Keating has joined her son Tom at Mossview Care Home in Liverpool, where she has been since 2016. Tom never married, so they have always lived together and are inseparable, spending time playing games or watching TV. Ada said, I say goodnight to Tom in his room every night and I'll go and say good morning to him. I'll tell him I'm coming down for breakfast. When I go out to the hairdressers, he'll look for me to see when I'm coming back. When I get back, he'll come to me with his arms outstretched and give me a big hug. Tom adds, she's very good at looking after me. Sometimes she'll say, behave yourself, and care home manager Philip Daniels says it's very touching to see the close relationship both Tom and Ada share, and we are so pleased we're able to accommodate both of their needs. Okay, yeah, all right, the story is sweet, but dude, you're 80 years old. It might be time to cut the cord. Get the Daily Dose of Weird News podcast for Apple or Android at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. And please leave a review on iTunes if you like the show. I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos! Ghosts, demons, shadow people, unsolved mysteries, unexplained phenomenon, monsters, and more. True stories of the paranormal and supernatural. I'm Darren Marlar, the creator and host of Weird Darkness, where I bring you the dark, creepy, and macabre. You can even tell me your own stories for use in future episodes. Get the podcast today for Apple, Android, or your favorite podcasting app at WeirdDarkness.com. <laughs>